Good evening, race fans. Welcome to the IROC GNG Radiator. Keep cool 100 at the beautiful Irwindale Speedway in Irwindale, California. I'm Randolph Chenneth. He was Cam Walsh joining me in the booth with Hugo Louis running the cameras. It's a beautiful Wednesday night this evening. Uh, Cam, how are you tonight? Oh, well, we were doing great, but now we'll hopefully uh, have a good race here at a uh, figure eight speedway here for our week 13 festivities. Randy, it should be an interesting one at that. Yes, sir. Figure eight racing for 100 laps here at Irwindale. We're not running the big outside circuit. We're running a little inner one. And uh, we got ourselves a pre-race interview with Mr. Daniel Glover. Glover, how are you doing this evening? Doing great, guys. I appreciate you having me up here. Now, I understand the sponsorship of this race, G&G Radiator, keep cool. Uh, the G&G stands for something. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, the G&G stands for Glover & Glover. Um, it's a family-owned business that my father and my grandfather owned since 1970 is when the business started and still up and going today. It's a small town auto repair shop in New Albany, Indiana. So ever since then, my dad's been promoting races for, well, to this year, be a 27th year promoter, but this is the, for the 17th annual G&G Raider Keep Cool 100, which is actually coming up in real life at Sports Home Speedway on May 16th, or I'm sorry, April 16th this year. And then where is that Speedway located in case there's any viewers in the local area? Maybe they can tune out, help out some, uh, some local, um, Short track figure eight race in, uh, in their own area? Yeah, it's a sports show speedway in Jeffersonville, Indiana. It's just about three miles north of Louisville, Kentucky. All right, now I understand that this particular event, the sim racing version, is uh, being sponsored for a very special reason for your family. Do you want, would you like to tell us about that? Yeah, we lost my grandfather a couple years back, and ever since then, I mean, his heart and passion has been in figure eight racing. He started off owning figure eight cars, and eventually my dad drove figure eight cars, and well, now I just took over the shoe driving figure eight cars. So um, after he passed away, we named this race in honor of him, uh, Frank Glover. So tonight is the Frank Glover Memorial G&G Rarekee Cool 100. We're definitely sorry to hear about your grandfather, but it's always good to see racing keeping you in the family. And figure eight racing is kind of like that. It is sort of a family sort of deal. Once one of the one generation gets the crazy, the crazy tends to get passed down further and further until uh, the, the kids are basically following their father's and grandfather's footsteps. Now, I know you have to go qualify, so I'll let you get a chance to go out there and run some laps. Good luck tonight, my friend, and we hope from here to hear about you uh, later on in the race. I appreciate you guys. You'll have a good night, too. No problem, Daniel. Now, Cam, have you ever watched figure eight racing before? I have seen the, uh, the, the rare video on the YouTube, but no, not necessarily seen it live, uh, but, uh, well, I'm open to everything here, and it looks like this is going to be a relatively exciting event. Uh, Randy, at some point, they uh, cross sections, if you're not familiar with it. Yeah, they do. They obviously run four corners, except one of them goes to the left, the other one goes to the right, and then they meet in the middle. For those who have never seen a figure eight race, this is basically how it works. Cars will line up like a conventional oval race, and they'll get the green flag. They'll go through, and over the course of the race, the cars will obviously get spread out. And as the cars do get spread out, they're going to have to be watching that intersection to go through. It's going to be like in real life. You have to watch for uh, green lights, pedestrians, and all that, except in this, you're looking for cross traffic. Except here, the, gra the cross traffic does not get a red light. So you basically both go as hard as you can, and whoever thinks that they can't make it is supposed to slow down. Sometimes you don't slow down if you think you can make it, if you're, if you're really, uh, really feeling brave, and sometimes, well... That results in an incident going through the uh, going through the center of the track. Um, it's gonna be pretty exciting. A lot of different forms of it. We're gonna be running the street star here this evening at Irwindale. Irwindale's a uh, fairly famous uh, racetrack. It's hosted the Turkey Night Grand Prix in the past, the big race for midget racing, which has now since moved to Paris, as Irwindale might be getting ready to shut down here in real life up here in California. But um, yeah, figure eight racing is definitely a mainstay to. Uh, the main event when it comes to your local short track you got your demolition derbies you got your boat and trailer races your figure your train races and your figure eights and uh, the figure eight is one that is definitely probably the most seriously taken in terms of a lot of the preparation that goes into it they get purpose-built race cars and it's uh it is a very very big style of racing in its niche community well, it's it's not just that these cars are uh, the cars that do run it are typically extraordinarily built and very very quick. 
Uh, so it should definitely be interesting to see. We're here on iRacing with the uh, the street stock cars that we have here. These are some very good cars that we have, and uh, it should be an interesting run at that. These guys are running about 22-second 20, uh, laps, uh, so we'll have to see just uh, how many laps it will take before they start lapping one another. But, Randy, just uh, a race like this, you know, you got to love a short track. Uh, you and I are both Americans here, which is a, a rarity here in Race Spot. We don't normally have uh, as many Americans. Americans in the booth but for us this is something that uh that, that really just gets ingrained in you and I as I said I haven't seen a figure eight race but I do love the short track atmosphere so well it should be a good fun run at that yep like you said it is just sort of a mainstay the whole short track sort of style um and having the off events to attract some local uh local fans out to the racetrack um Drag racing will sort of do similar things. They'll get jet cars to run down the, the quarter mile as quick as they can. Uh, qualifying underway right now. Pole is current, or excuse me, the field is currently led by Gary B. Whitson in a 22-269. Um, give yourself an idea of how close the field is. The top 10 are only separated by about half of a second. Uh, they're running fixed setups here this evening, so definitely good to see the field so tightly held together. But with this figure eight racing and the intersection in the center, Whoever's the fastest may not necessarily win the race. It's all about who can survive and who can stay out of the trouble in that center. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, well, it's a 100-lap race, so it's very important to keep that car in one piece. I know at some point uh, it will, uh, as we are going to be gridding up here at Irwindale Speedway, uh, Randy, and as these cars take the grid, uh, we do have uh, 22, 23 cars here today, so a rather packed short track, and uh, Gary Whitson is able to keep the pole, uh, Randy. Yes, he is. And starting outside of him is going to be Austin Milser. Row two is going to be James Day Jr., Stephen Dager Jr. Row three, Mark Myers and Stephen Wetton. They're going to be fifth and sixth. Uh, outside, or excuse me, inside for turn four, we're going to have L. Bryce Whitson Jr. and Mark Atkins Jr. A row of juniors. Row ten, Travis Brown and Travis, or excuse me, row five, Travis Brown and James Trula. Eleventh and twelfth, Dylan Acker, Jackie Fillmore. Rex row back, Jonathan Holstein and Louis Robinette. Alan Young and Dan Glover, who we just talked to a few minutes ago in the 15th and 16th. Edward Bray and Daniel Vining in 17th and 18th. 19th and 20th, we got Brian, Brian Yazik and Jeffrey Gillian. Matt Howell will bring out the last qualifier in 21st. Uh, Aaron Kilianis and Todd Kirkwood will round out the back of the field. Neither made qualifying laps. They're pacing right now. Cam, this is going to be a fun one. Oh, it absolutely is. We've only got one more turn before we let him loose here at Irwindale Speedway. Randy, it is going to be in the foot of Gary Whitson before they will head into turn number one. Now, well, let's get ready for some action here on iRacing Live. Well, we're going for another lap, Cam, unless the pace car is pulling off of there. Oh, no, we are green. You are right. Gary Whitson goes <laughs> roaring down into turn number one, the only left-hander here. And the tail end of the field should be through the intersection by the time Gary is going to be going through it. We got some contact in the back. Nothing too major. Oh, we got a car spinning around into the infield. That, I believe, is Jonathan Holstein. He's going to get it back going, though, and he's going to be going underway. And, oh, coming out of the final corner, we got a bit of a stack up as well. But Gary is able to make a pretty clean getaway, it looks like. Yeah, the, the first lap, everyone sort of bunched up in that final. Oh, right we, got a big, Very tight. we got a big, a big, big pile up going into turn one and two. That oh, is, yes, we do. there are a lot of cars involved there. And everyone getting themselves back rolling again. I'm yeah, sure this gonna... is not what they're going to be want to be seeing as we're getting our first event through the crossover. And oh, we got a big impact from our leaders. Oh, heavens, as this is figure eight racing here. Now, uh, we might be seeing an admin thrown yellow here. This is going to be uh, an important thing. It might be able to rack them back up. We do have one car on its roof, which is a, an interesting position to be. I don't think the car drives very well on its roof, Randy. But uh, as uh, the rest of the cars are starting to pull through, the field seems to have sorted itself out, which is an interesting thing just because of how spread out it's gotten. And we'll have to see here, as uh, we do have had a couple of uh, incidents, Gary uh, Whitson was involved in an incident there. That is actually very important in the uh, intersection there, Randy. And Gary, who are qualifying, uh, our qualifying top runner, he is now going to be falling down the path with a little bit of damage on that number 13 car. Yeah, Mark Myers has actually moved himself to the lead. And actually, yeah, Mark Myers in that black number 84, excuse me, 04, when James Day Jr. right behind him in that yellow 98, they're kind of trading places back and forth right now. Right now, it's a little bit of uh, congestion in that center intersection. The, f 
the slower cars are supposed to heed to the faster cars, but what it's seemed like thus far is that no one really wants to, uh, to give the lane, and thus it's been pretty attrition-filled, and we've already gotten pretty spread out. Yes, we have. As we actually, uh, we got James spinning in that yellow 98. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, James Day Jr., he had gone for a loop. That'll give uh, Steven Dagger Jr. the uh, run in that 51 car with As uh, with uh, Austin Missler, who started in second position. He's going to be continuing on second. He's actually going to go on the inside uh, of, uh, I believe that's a lapped car, the up Dylan Ackert, as he will come through the corner, and he'll start heading to the intersection one more time. Ooh, he barely makes it. Oh, <laughs> chased by three cars. And he will cross the intersection, and he'll have some lap traffic on the inside. Now, Randy, as people sort themselves out, and everything gets a little more comfortable as we finish out lap number seven here at Irwindale Speedway, I have to say, uh, it seems that uh, after that uh, that early uh, jitters, I guess, as uh, somebody spun it off uh, three, uh, I, everything seems to have relatively calmed down right now. Yeah, calm is an interesting word for a racetrack that meets in the center. But yeah, you're right. The initial congestion has, oh, it's our leader, Steven, almost got into a car going through the intersection. As, oh, a car did get into someone else going through the intersection. But yeah, once once the field gets spread out, I don't want to say it calms down, but it is definitely not as bad. Once you get those initial uh, those initial incidents going going um, and the, uh, basically having packs of cars, that intersection can be really scary uh, rather than having to just deal with one or two cars at a time. As we could do, do, get another little incident, I believe, with Steven Digger through the intersection, but nothing too bad. No, he, uh, yeah. he dragged uh, he dragged the brake right through there and just gave it just a little bit of a pinstripe to, to one of the passing cars there. As he'll go through the intersection one more time, just beating out another two lapped cars here. He's making his way around. Now, he's managed to get himself a big lead, but Randy, that really doesn't mean anything. One incident as he will cross one more time. All right, as Bo he makes it, and the rest of the field seems to be making it. Uh, one little incident can really tighten everything right back up as Steven Dagger, uh, that, that final right-hander, uh, before the uh, the start finish line, that is actually a very difficult corner uh, to to run, Randy. It's an extraordinarily tight corner, and I think we've seen a couple of times now a bunch of cars packing up on that corner. Yeah, this figure H circuit is a little bit odd compared to a lot of others. The uh, the actual intersection isn't really in the center of the track. It's actually offset towards turn one and turn three, and because of that, turn two or turn four are both very very tight. As we get getting word that our second place runner of Stephen Wetton. Oh, he's or, messed up that car all sorts of bad. Yeah, which is which is definitely not good to see. I'm sure he's not going to be too happy about that. No, but, uh, I can imagine yeah, he is... was running through the intersection. Oh, and he had a collision with the, uh, let's see if we can get it here. Uh, dude, the car number is 90, I believe, or at least that's the 06. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, yes, the 90, Brian Yakzik, he was involved with, as that's unfortunate for him. But... Uh, where one will fall, one will take its place. And James Day Jr. now, Randy, is in second position with Steven Dagger Jr. still in first. Yeah, Steven's got himself a pretty big gap right now. But like you were saying, one small incident, and uh, he could easily, that gap could go away. But, it, I mean, not even necessarily an incident. If he gets oh, into a position, we got another big impact to the That's intersection. Your that was a, yeah, but um, if you get another. Not even necessarily an incident, just if he has to feel he's the one that needs to check up going through the old, through the intersection, um, he could lose a lot of time, three to four seconds to lap easy, and if that happens once or twice, but whereas the car behind him gets some decent luck and they're able to just barrel through that intersection flat out, as like I said, James is having to lift, lift through the uh, intersection there. and cars getting involved. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of stuff happening in this race right now, Kim. Yeah, it is I think... Go ahead. <laughs> No, I, I just, uh, well, it's it's just, it's one of those things. Our, our leader, Steven Dagger, has managed to lose the entire front bumper of his car. The number 51 car is now running with his radiator as the front of the vehicle. I don't believe that's a very uh, great thing to have as the leading edge, uh, especially through a, a, a difficult circuit like this. Uh, as uh, we're just talking, uh, right now, L. Bryce Whitson Jr. is in second with Alan Young in third. James Day Jr. is in fourth, but he was in the pits with uh, Gary B. Whitson, our qualifier. He had also had to pull it into the pits. But Randy, uh, as uh, well, these cars, they're sort of dragging their brakes. The lapped cars are dragging their brakes into the intersection. But sometimes I think what we've been seeing, they get stopped and it ends up uh, creating a bigger issue than if they just went through the intersection. Oh, yeah, it certainly can. And the uh, person we talked to before the race, one Daniel Glover, started 16th. He's got himself up in the fourth position right now. I believe he I, and he actually just went a lap down, so he's not having the greatest race ever, but he's up there comfortably in the top five, but we'll see maybe 
get himself back up there, uh, these top three, get themselves in the incident. But uh, as expected, Cam, there's been quite a bit of attrition. I don't think there's a car out there with a clean body panel on it anymore. And uh, like actually, you were saying, several of them are running with the radiator as the bumper. But luckily, yeah. there's strong radiators running peak antifreeze, and because of that, they're able to keep running even with the contact. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, Daniel Glover's car is remarkably uh, clean. It's got a couple of bumps around the edges as he bumps into the leader and corrects me. Uh, but uh, he will find his way through as, uh, yeah, we you can, of course, get not only peak antifreeze fluid for your antifreeze radiator, but you can get the windshield wiper fluid. And I have a feeling these guys might also need that, though I don't think we have windshield wipers on street stocks which would probably make sense. But as uh, the rest of the field seems to be coming through here, it's, uh, well, we have to see just where people lie. Our, qu our top qualifier, Gary Whitson, he is back in eighth position one lap down. Uh, a couple of our early runners, uh, James Day Jr., that 98 car, he's up to sixth position. He started in third. But right now, it's in Steven Zagger's hands. He's got a 15-second lead here, and he really seems to be controlling uh, his ability to go through the intersection. He doesn't really have to worry about anybody coming through. Uh, he can go to his own pace. He doesn't have to worry about people uh, trying to make a pass on him, so he can uh, uh, attack that intersection. I guess that's the best word for it, uh, at his leisure. Oh, definitely. And just looking back through the grid, what's interesting to note is that three of our top five cars started at about halfway through the top 20 started 14th 15th and 16th and they're up through third through fifth respectively so it's definitely interesting to see the way this attrition is working and people able to work themselves through those early traffic jams and get themselves out to the front yes and uh, so as steven tagger jr i almost want to go on board can we go on board with steven tagger jr i wondered if he has an onboard camera so we'll go on board <laughs> with this street stock here as he makes his way through the intersection. I just, this has got to be a, a, cra a crazy or chaotic view, I have to say, as they're coming through Irwindale Speedway. He comes out of corner number four. There's a car, somebody uh, has going backwards, uh, trying to get out of the intersection. That's a smart way to do it, uh, as he'll work his way uh, through, I believe this is uh, one and two, Randy? Uh, yes, one and two, and he's going into turn three and four right now. After okay, going through the intersection. You saw a car that was probably about 5 feet, 10 feet in front of him as he cleared the intersection here. He'll kill some more cones before coming up on lap traffic. Now, this is going to be rather totally interesting, Randy. He's going to have to figure out a way to get past this lap traffic. Yeah, he has to find a way to get past the lap traffic and not, while not getting creamed through the intersection. Luckily for him, though, where he is, um, I believe most of the cars that he almost gets hit going through the oh, intersection. Somebody, he that did. Was, the, the that was quite close. did. But, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely going to be hard for him to get through the traffic quickly, um, especially getting through the intersection. But what is nice is when he has all this traffic right in front of him, it means that there's less cars somewhere else around the track possibly going through the intersection, which is always good to see. He can see him. That's it. <laughs> They're right where he can see him. As once again, he makes it through the intersection with some people very, very close to him. He's got a 19-second lead over L. Bryce Whitson, uh, and uh, Whitson is working his way through it. He uh, doesn't have much to worry about behind him as it's just right now Dagger and Whitson on the lead lap. But uh, right now, Whitson's working his way on it. He seems to be making it through the intersection very well. He's saving himself up here. We are on lap number 26, working on going into lap number 27 of this 100-lap event. So we still got a lot of this race left to uh, run here, Hugo. Or, uh, well, oh, boy, Hugo's our camera operator, Randy. Yeah, we've still got a lot of race to go, about three quarters of the of the race left. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a lot of time that you can get yourself moving back forward. <laughs> but, oh, we got a big pile up in the Ooh, intersection. Yes. There was a huge, we got an, Alan Young is on his lid. He, that a was a of, huge uh, engines pile blown. Up. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I think there's a couple engines outside of the cars. But yeah, that was a very <laughs> big, very big incident. We got a lap car pulling into pit road right now with an engine blown, I believe. I'm not sure who that was. Oh, it's is the number difficult 04 of to be Mark tracing Meyer. these uh, these cars down, I have to admit, uh, as, uh, yes, it was uh, Mark Myers. Now, actually, Stephen Dagger is pulling into the pits now. I believe he has accumulated some damage, so that will allow Whitson, Whitson if he is able to, to, to take the lead as uh, he will work his way through this lap as uh, Dagger ended up having to go to pit lane as uh, Whitson, he's rolling his way safely through for its corners one and two. He'll work his way uh, across the intersection. No worries there, and we'll have to see if Whitson can pick up the lead this 
this time by. And uh, if he does uh, and keeps that car clean, he should be relatively okay with a gap with Steven uh, Dagger in the pits having to get his car repaired. Yep, L. Bryce Whitson moving himself to the point now after getting his lap back with Steven Dagger. And uh, he's actually the admin who's putting the race on. Admin of the iRacing Online Championship, home of the HPP Simulation Series. Uh, that's the organization that runs quite a few series, ranging from oval stock cars and trucks to sports cars, which is actually going to be a series I'm going to be competing in starting next week, and I believe we're going to be bringing that to you live on RaceSpot.tv on Thursday night. Um, also, if you're interested on live timing, live timing for this race is available at RaceSpot.tv slash timing, so be sure to check it out. You'll be able to see the gaps that probably make a good uh, deal of sense of some of the incidents that are happening watching the live timing screen. That's if you can take your your eyes off the uh, the cameras. Cause with these figure eight races, just about anything can happen. Alan, speaking of the camera. back to the iRacing Online Championship G&G Radiator Keep Cool 100 an unexpected commercial break for us all as we had a technical issue we apologize for that but right now we have some figure 8 racing to bring back to you it's uh, myself Cameron Walsh Randy Chenworth and Hugo Louis on the cameras we are lap 47 almost halfway through so hey we've still got a great race going on L. Bryce Whitson Jr. in the double zero car is leading this race with a 22 second gap over Daniel Glover not much has changed in that respect
expect. And as the uh, the most of the field has closed right back up, Randy, into one big pack, which means in just a few laps time, I'm sure that they are going to be having issues at the intersection here at this figure eight circuit. Oh, yeah, there's always, always issues in the intersection here as our leader actually spins, and that was not in the intersection. That was going through turns three and four. That is, let's see, he gets it back going. Doesn't look like it was a very hard hit, but it was uh, definitely some time lost that he didn't want because he was actually getting ready to lap our second place runner of Dan Glover. Um, and now that he is obviously lost that time after getting spun, Dan is going to be able to get away a few seconds down the road, which means that uh, he's going to have just less of a cushion if he has an issue, if he has to check up multiple laps in a row. But yeah, um, I'm sure Daniel Glover, though, is very happy to see that. Daniel's going to turn one right now, and Bryce is just now going through the intersection and into turn one. So, uh, lost about 10 seconds there, Cam. Yes, he did, and uh, that uh, lighter uh, purple color, I have to say. Or is that white? I'm not quite sure on the sun uh, here in the back. We'll call it way. violet. Violet? Uh, okay. All right. We'll run with that uh, against that G&G &G radiator car of Daniel Glover, that number 45 car. But uh, just this figure eight intersection uh, has been tripping up people all race long. We've seen people, uh, well, Randy, to say strategize uh, in their attempts to come across the intersection. We've seen them uh, either halt to a complete stop and wait for traffic, much like a standard stoplight. But uh, alternatively, we've seen people try, well, all sorts of things. Yeah, we've seen lots and lots of things, like you're saying, from people following the rules of the road and uh, checking up if they need to, or other people who seem to be driving as if they have a uh, dash mounted camera and live in Russia. But yeah, it's definitely been some exciting racing here. El Bryce Woodson, um, currently the beneficiary of all the drama and currently leading. Daniel Glover, though, is a beneficiary as well. And actually, Woodson almost got, he got some contact again going into three and four, almost got spun around, was able to hold on to it as the two cars ahead of him actually make contact as they go through the intersection. Um, we've had quite a bit of attrition here, so a lot of the cars have ended up pulling off the racetrack. And uh, because of that, it is much less crowded out there at the moment. But a lot of times, that that could almost be worse than having a lot of cars out there because you get your uh, you could you could um, excuse me, you could uh, put your guard down and you could actually get just you know hit or something, just not even expecting it because you weren't as paying as much attention as you were earlier on in the event. Yes, these guys were tiptoeing very early on, and it was uh, a very, very sudden. If you were getting an impact, uh, you can get blindsided, of course, as these drivers do have all the proper safety equipment, which means that you have that lovely safety net on the left-hand side uh, of you uh, as, a, as a driver, which means uh, you can uh, have a pretty blind view of that intersection some kind, uh, on at least one part of the lap. But for the most part, though, I have to say uh, right now this main uh, group of cars here, which uh, uh, old Bryce Whitson Jr. is uh, in the middle of in that double zero violent car, or whichever color we've decided. Uh, he's just uh, he's trying to run it as well as he can. I think he's just taking a safe race right now, Randy, though he does occasionally take out the cone. He's, for the most part, keeping his race clean, but that's been meaning that Daniel Glover has not been falling back as fast as he was. Uh, originally, it was 23 seconds before that spin from Whitson. Now it's only down to 18.8 seconds. Yeah, I believe after that initial spin um, that Whitson decided just to play it cool because obviously too many of those and suddenly Daniel's not a lap in the rear view mirror. He's just right in the rear view mirror. And uh, obviously with Glover's family being the ones who organized the real race as well as uh, putting on this one that we are you know, have the pleasure to bring to you and broadcast for you today, uh, I'll say Daniel probably knows how to figure eight and I'm not sure Whitson wants that howling down in the rear view mirror. Uh, I can imagine these uh, the actual... Uh, corners, if we were to call them themselves, the uh, the, the more circuit-oriented corners, they're very, very tight, actually. You have a, a very tight intro to the corner. It hangs well out to the right. Then you have to all of a sudden find a way to turn that car almost, uh, I have to say, 45 degrees uh, to get onto the straight to go across the uh, the mighty intersection. Uh, so it's just a, oh, it's, a, it's an interesting strategy to, to say the least and as the cars do thin out as understandably they would uh, due to the attrition here and the nature of figure eight racing as uh, they do kind of meet in the middle uh, I have to say though Whitson he's played it very smart he's kept his car absolutely clean as well as Daniel Glover and a couple of other cars and it's working out to his favor yes definitely we're working ourselves on lap 59 of the 100 laps of this event, just a little over halfway through. Let's go down your running order a little bit. Leading the race, as we've been talking about, Elbrice Whitson Jr., second place, 
Daniel Glover in the 45, about a three quarters of a lap back. Uh, getting into third and fourth, we have Austin Milster running third. He's currently one lap down, and Dylan Ackert, who's two laps down. Top five rounding it out is Travis Brown, who's also two laps down as well. But the thing is, with this intersection, Cam, if our leaders can get into a big incident, they could be right back into the middle of this thing. Oh, absolutely. It only takes one incident as Daniel Glover is having faster cars going through. As he is uh, Actually, Daniel Glover has had uh, some contact with a car uh, trying to, to make it across uh, the inside of the corner there. Now, uh, in third position, we haven't really talked about it, is Austin Missler. He's only one lap down. He can even be involved in this if uh, he plays his cards right. Now, we'll have to see here as he's actually in a race with uh, Dylan Eckhart, though they are a lap apart. Uh, and Dylan Ackard is working with uh, against uh, Travis Brown, who is right behind him. So the closest battle on the track right now is Dylan Ackard and Travis Brown for fourth and fifth positions. Yeah, they're running bumper to nose cone right now, and uh, I think they're playing it smart. We haven't seen anything crazy out of them. I've been watching them for a few laps now. They're just sort of hoping to stay alive and work their, their way forward, it seems like, with the attrition. Um, right now, they actually have Daniel Glover right in front of them. So, uh, or excuse me, right behind them, going to be working their way looking to get his way through as they are lapped down. But yeah, this has been a, a very, very interesting, um, this could be very, very interesting if we just get like a little bit of, a uh, little bit of contact going through the intersection or if Bryce gets to a point where he needs to check up. Yes, and uh, if somebody does uh, happen to check up in front of you, uh uh, I have, uh, I have, of course, uh, everyone wants to drive as politely as possible, but it wouldn't be the strangest thing in the world if somebody to uh, say hello uh, to somebody else, if you would. Yeah, obviously. But like you said, anything can happen now as we do this uh, get rolling on lap 65 here, at week 13 racing at race spot style. And Cam, uh, looking through the field, Looks Well, Bryce is getting ready to put Daniel lap down again. Last time this happened, Bryce actually ended up almost spinning. Although it looks like Bryce is going to be able to get through the lap track a little bit more cleanly. Um, something interesting to talk about is that this race has uh, kind of split between some of the IROC oval runners and some of their road course guys. Um, although it seems like most of their oval runners have gotten themselves out front. Do you think that's just experience from maybe people who have actually seen the short track style racing in real life? Or do you think is that just because the cars are... Uh, more oval air oriented as which it does get alongside with Glover, a little bit of contact there just a little bit of a love tap as the 73 goes to the inside to kill some cone as we have seen much curter uh, much cone massacre excuse me as uh, it looks like Whitson is pulling in right behind that 45 car uh, we'll have to see what he can do coming out of uh, it'll be three and four here they'll make contact with a lapped car and uh, that'll be Daniel Glover and our leader alongside the leader right now, Al Bryce Whitson, does have the opportunity to do it. And he will. He will put uh, one lap on the field unless this lap car can get in the way. It will actually force Glover to the outside. So now Al Bryce Whitson, he's got a lead lap, but that's not to say that everything's in the bag. Anything can happen here as somebody has gone to the outside barrier. That's the 11 car of Austin Missler as uh, Missler is now uh, going another lap down. But I have to say, uh, Randy, between the, these road people and the oval people, that I think this is one of those uh, special event type tracks where you, you really just, uh, as long as you have a heads up as to what's going on in the intersection, and you're relatively familiar with having a nose uh, ducking onto the inside of you every single corner, as long as you can predict those things, I think anybody uh, could at least be, uh, be enough of a runner here now to say that this is a skillless uh, skill set of racing this figure eight would be laughable. This does take quite a bit of skill, Randy, and quite a bit of muscle memory at that. Oh yeah, it does. A lot of uh, a lot of muscle memory, a lot of skill, and uh, a lot of things I probably can't say on the broadcast, so I won't. But right now, that G and G radiators uh, uh, double zero Lumina just to date uh, the, that livery um, of El Bryce Whitson Jr. is currently leading, working on lap seventy one. So we currently got. 30 laps to go, Cam, and Bryce is, he's, he's running a smart race. He's not making, taking any, Ooh, <laughs> we, get a, close, we get a huge, a huge impact behind him, though. Bryce <laughs> just barely threads that needle and gets him through, gets himself through the intersection. I was about to say he's not taking any, uh, any extreme risks uh, with his lead. Um, but yeah, that was, that was really, really very close. Yes, very, very close indeed, and he got on the radio after that and just uh, he cheered a, a very good sigh of relief, I have to say, as Whitson almost 
making that uh, that happen with that 62 car. So uh, he lives to fight another day. Our leader, though, as he will enjoy his lap on the field. Uh, and if you're Daniel Glover, not all is lost. There's there's nothing uh, really to uh, to be sad about. He started in 16th position, mind you. And after we've had those big incidents, uh, I have to say he has been putting on a fantastic race. As uh, Whitson will pull across uh, one more time, he'll put another car the lap down that 62, whom he almost had that incident with. As he'll pull across, he is starting though. I have to say with his speed to close in, Randy. And uh, we knew this was coming, where this intersection is becoming a very hazardous place. Oh, yeah, it certainly is. And as Bryce works his way through it again, and Daniel's going to be coming next, Daniel gets a free trip through. Um, and that's the thing with a lot of this attrition, that, that intersection has calmed down a little bit. Like we were saying about Daniel starting in 16th, he's a lap back. But starting that deep in the field, he was behind almost all the big impacts that we saw. And he had to work his way through all of them. Um, but yeah, it is, it's definitely been a very, very good dr uh, drive for Daniel and also for the guys behind Austin and Travis Brown, who I believe they themselves got, uh, got impacts and had to actually pit and uh, get repairs, which is why they're, they're so far down, the, um, down on Bryce. But, it, um, but yeah, it's definitely been a very, very eventful race and, and really a lot of attrition. Because like you said, Daniel started 16th. The fourth place runner, Dylan Ackhart, started 11th. The fifth place runner started 9th. The sixth place runner started 19th. There's definitely a lot of room to get yourself up the field with this style of racing. Yes, and uh, Dylan Eckhart, he's uh, well, he's a New Yorker. He's a club New Yorker, so i got to give a shout-out to him because I'm always happy when there are New Yorkers running races like this. But, yes, the overall series, though, we have to say, if you're trying to figure out what you're watching here, this is the iRacing Online Championship, IROC, G&G, Radiator, Keep Cool 100 here. Now, uh, the, the series, IROC, races... Quite a few series, actually, Randy. We have uh, road racing and oval racing, as you were alluding to, between the different skill sets. And as uh, Whitson pulls his way through the intersection one more time, I have to say, those uh, those lap cars, they get a little closer and a little closer because uh, Whitson does have speed here. And uh, he's just starting to really close in on some of them. He's, he is getting very, very close. Uh, but uh, we have quite a few different couple of series uh, going all over the week. Uh, if you would be interested in some of those as a viewer, of course, you can uh, go to www.raceirock. Uh, that's raceiroc.com. That's their website. You get all the information there and all the different series. And, yes, we will be bringing the HPP Road Endurance Series uh, here on Race Spa TV. And, uh, Randy, I believe you are going to be racing in that as we are looking once again at Dylan Acker and Travis Brown there going side by side. Yeah, Dylan Ackhart and uh, Travis Brown are race are racing again as oh as they go through the intersection. I believe big incident there. Was that Daniel Glover that got no. I believe caught up in that? No, not that I could see. Uh, Daniel Glover. Oh no, he has been involved. He was involved actually, Randy. Yeah, that that was a big in impact going through the intersection there. There was a big checkup. And then some people who didn't check up had to, uh, well, they didn't get too lucky going through it. Um, hopefully Daniel's able to keep it going. But as you were saying, Austin and Dylan, well, they were side by side. Or excuse me, Dylan and Travis. Well, Travis is now in the pit, so. That car obviously picking up quite a bit of damage there. Yeah, let's see if we can't uh, roll up a replay uh, of this as uh, we've been seeing a replay on the screen now for a while. But, uh, yeah, it just didn't look like Glover was able to do much with it. Now, this is uh, one of those things where somebody will stop, uh, and rightfully so, to allow the, the faster of the oncoming cars as Glover will be bringing his car down onto pit road. Very unfortunate as uh, Whitson was so far ahead. He didn't have... Uh, any issue coming through there so we'll have to see what Bryce Whitson can do now as uh, the pressure seems to be taking off but things are uh, picking up really uh, here at the Irwindale Speedway but uh, Randy very unfortunate as actually Whitson had to had to hold the brakes there he actually came to a complete stop yeah sometimes and you know sometimes discretion is the better part of valor just bring yourself to the stop especially with the lead he has he doesn't want to pull a uh a Paul Tracy at Phoenix in 1993 when he had two laps on the field and then crashed. Um, but uh, yeah, right. definitely, definitely keeping himself alive. He's pretty much as long as he can keep himself alive. He's only got about 16, 17 laps to go. He's pretty much got the race in the bag so long as he can uh, keep it out of the wall and keep it out of other cars through that intersection. 
Yeah, or if we're referencing vague races, uh, vague races, uh, there was the, of course, the race a couple of years ago at Bristol with Denny Hamlin. He led, I believe it was, uh, it was I think it was Bristol. He led somewhere, uh, I don't think it was actually Bristol, might have been Charlotte, uh, where he led over, uh, I think it was some... 200 laps or something like that and he ended up coming away uh in probably 16th position when they made the horrible decision to go to two tires when everyone went to uh four tires so uh of course uh everyone should know that one just as uh paul tracy and that nuts uh i believe indycar at phoenix as oh bryce Wilson once again he has thread the needle with that one he had to lead that well off track uh randy that was his uh, that was one of those moments where you just kind of pucker and hold on the throttle Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. And, I mean, really, that's how you get yourself out front in this sort of race. Oh, he, As he, oh, oh he wanted to stop going <laughs> through the intersection. The car behind him didn't. He got rear-ended because of it. Luckily, he didn't get pushed into the intersection because that would have been a very, traffic. very big impact. Well, I mean, everyone's lap traffic to him at the moment. But, um, He's on the break but, again. But, yeah, that oh. was that was very, very scary there, I'm sure, for Bryce. Um, able to get through relatively cleanly. They'll need to replace that back clip. But besides that, everything's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Other than the fact that the car is completely damaged, it's completely fine. Uh, as he, that was like two or three laps in a row, or two or three intersections, I guess I should say, in a row, where he had to whoa that pony up, and he stood on the brake. And uh, the cars around him were, were, what are you doing? And it's, so they're flying around or on either side of him. So if you're Bryce Whitson, that's, you got a sigh of relief now. It, it seems that it comes and goes in waves, and he's on lap 87, so he's on the back stretch, as it were, as he will go past a, a car, stopped car that was uh, allowing some traffic to go through. Uh, yeah, boy, this is just throwing all sorts of obstacles at Bryce now, isn't it, Randy? Oh, it certainly is, and it, it's not going to make these last 10 laps boring or easy for Bryce at all. Um, we've been saying Bryce has been running, well, as much as he can in this style of racing, a very calm race, but... Uh, you know, towards the end, it's starting to pick up, and, you know, the slower cars, you know, they kind of get a blue flag through the intersection. The lap cars are supposed to, to heed for the leader, but I think Bryce is just so interested in keeping himself alive right now that he's more or less just checking up almost every time he gets to the intersection and there's other cars, there goes again. Other cars going, he does it again. That's a bad strategy. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to stop in the intersection. You want to stop <laughs> just before it. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's, it's definitely been a very smart strategy for him, and it's paid off that he's just, you know... Even if he's the quote-unquote faster car and the, the car that's coming through should heed and give way, that he just checks up and lets them go. Because now instead of, yeah, maybe he might lose a second or two, but he doesn't get hit and he doesn't get damaged and he doesn't have to go to the, uh, go to the pits because of it. Yeah, he doesn't flip the car over. That would be a, uh, that's, it's not the most effective strategy to winning, uh, flipping the car over. But as uh, Whitson will pull through once again the intersection, that time he was just full on. He saw the oncoming traffic and just went for it. Uh, it's one of those things where uh, there's been uh, stop traffic on his lane as he will come to a near complete stop hill now uh, as the 33 car uh, had to work his way through. I believe that was actually uh, that's, uh, that was Travis Brown as he'll let him through as uh, he's well he's finding himself being surrounded by lap traffic and uh, I have to say that's almost a worrying thing because this uh, this other traffic they are actually racing each other, Randy. Oh yeah, that's the thing, Bryce. At this point. He's not really racing anybody too hard, but all these other guys, like you go down Austin Miller, Austin Miller, Daniel Glover, they're on the same lap. Dylan Ackhart's alone. Lewis Robinette's alone. Holstein's alone. Or excuse me, Holstein's racing Travis Brown. There are a lot of guys out there that are still racing around these guys. So they're all jo uh, jockeying for position and then pushing each other and bumping each other and, you know, trying to outdo the other guy, whereas Whitson just has to sort of stay alive as uh, yeah. Whitson's going to cross the finish line right now, bring us the seven laps to go in this 100-lap event. Yes, it is, and uh, it's, it doesn't matter if you finish 8 laps down or 13 laps down. 10th position is still good to go uh, as he will work his way across the intersection one more time. Uh, we are closing in on that time as the entire field is now seemingly behind Whitson. Uh, that has sort of been the story of the day as Whitson has been able to pull off the lead uh, in about lap 30, 35, 40 as he has managed his way through here at the Irwindale Speedway figure 8. And uh, Randy, I have to say, he has put on a, a great race on how to run a figure eight race. I don't think he was involved in any big scrap. Yeah, I don't think Bryce has been involved in too much, at least not that I've seen. Um, he may have been caught up in something early, but so much was happening there. It's really hard to remember who was and wasn't involved in those events. Everybody. But, yeah, I think pretty much everyone. So we're probably wrong on that. I'm sure Bryce got caught up in one of those. 
But he's since worked his way forward. We've also not had any yellow flags, thankfully. It's been green the entire way, which is always good to see. Um, but yeah, Bryce running a very, very good race. As was Donald, uh, Donald Glover, who's running P3, and Austin Missler, who's running second um, in that number 11 Monster Energy car. But uh, a very good race indeed as Bryce crosses the start-finish line. We actually have four laps to go here, Cam. I wanted to call the five to go, but I missed it. Yeah, well, we're we're on three to go now. We're on lap number 97. Uh, these laps are just ticking on by as uh, Whiteson's been able to make his way through this field here. Now, to say, Daniel Glover, that g, &G Radiator car, he's started in 16th position, and uh, Brian Yagzik started in 19th position, and he's uh, in 5th position. So that is some uh, some good running there. It's some good decision-making, uh, maybe a little luck. I think that's what you need here at an eight uh, at a figure eight as uh, somebody, I believe, has just blown an engine, uh, which is not the way you want to end your race uh, with that, Bill. But I have to say, as we start a uh, final lap, Randy, what a good run from that double zero. Yeah, it's definitely been a good run for him as we're working ourselves on lap 99 out of 100. He's going to come through turn two right now and steam on down towards the intersection. Uh, been a very, very smart race. Yeah, uh, we have two laps to go, not uh, not uh, 99, then 100, and then and we finish. Uh, as uh, apparently that's how it uh, works out in almost every country everywhere. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so Whitson is uh, working his way around uh, this lap now. Now it's the last lap. Now let's see how what well he can do this, uh, Randy. Yeah, but he's going down into turn three right now. The intersection was completely clear, and if that was any indication, he's going to have pretty much a clear uh, shot right at the straight start finish line as he comes out of turn four. Barrels himself to the intersection, gets through it cleanly, and L. Bryce Whitson wins the iRacing Online Championship G&G Radiator Keep Cool 100 at Irwindale Speedway. That's just a good run from Whitson at uh, the entirety of that 100-lap uh, race here at the figure eight. Uh, it's, of course, we expected the normal attrition, as uh, that is what happens. But uh, for the most part, though, he managed uh, to control the race, control the pace, and uh, halting at that intersection and flooring through it at the right times, and he has come away with a win, Grandy. Yeah, and definitely good for him. Bryce, I know he does a lot of work over with the IROC series. He actually... He's an admin at the league, and I know for me as uh, a competitor running in the, uh, the sports car championship, he's the one sending out emails and sending up practice servers and the, our warm-up and practice races that we've been running uh, in the weeks up to the event. And um, so Bryce does a lot of work, and it's actually good to see someone who does and puts so much work into the, into the league and into the event um, actually come away with a win. Well, it's not just a win here, as uh, we can bring to you, and I can say this officially here on Race Spot TV, you can see the donuts uh, as uh, the smoke will rise here in the middle of Irwindale Speedway, and uh, that is Al Bryce Winston Jr. in that double zero car coming away with the victory, as uh, I'm sure you're uh, you're showing uh, uh, scoping up the uh, competition here. At least you know, Randy, if something happens, he can drive his way through that wreck as uh, I'm taking a, a full look at the uh, finishing order here at Irwindale Speedway. Yep, so L. Bryce Whitson, we've been talking about it all day. He ended up winning the race here by a full two laps off uh, off of Austin Missler brings home second place. Third place, Daniel Glover. We talked to him before the race. We'll see if we can get a chat with him again after after the good finish. Dylan Ackert in fourth. Brian Yazik in fifth. Louis Robinette sixth. Jonathan Holstein seventh. Travis Brown eighth. Jeffrey Gilliam ninth and Mark Myers bring himself rounds out the top 10 and actually talking about that ninth place starter that ninth place uh, excuse me that ninth place finisher started in 20 in 20th place so like we were saying all day a lot of ways to work yourself forward in these figure eight races Oh, an absolutely crazy race at that as uh, finishing in, uh, well, in 11th position was Alan Young, then Jackie Palmore, James Cruola uh, with uh, Aaron Kleinhans, uh, Gary B. Whitson finishing in 15th. Unfortunate for him, he had those early incidents even though he qualified in first. Steven Dagger Jr. in 16th, Edward Gray in 17th, da James Day Jr. in 18th, Daniel Vining 19th, Stephen Wetton in 20th position, Matt Howell in 21st, and Michael Atkins Jr. finishing in it. Second. Now, Randy, that, uh, boy, that, I, we have to say, we should probably do a couple more of these every once in a while. This was an exciting race. Oh, yeah, that was definitely an exciting race. It was, uh, event filled. There was obviously the, uh, usual, uh, 
issues going through the uh, intersection as you get with any style of uh, figure eight racing. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't chain the cars up for you and run it train racing style. That would have been pretty, uh, pretty dang exciting. But um, good to see Bryce get away with the win, and uh, it was definitely an exciting race. Um, the start of it was a little, uh, a little interesting. What with all the, um, all the incidents. Yes, uh, it, it just, uh, well, I mean, you, we had about the start that we expected to. When the inside apex is nothing but cones, I have a feeling someone's going to run it over, and I think everyone had that idea going into it. Uh, but uh, we'll have to see here, just looking at the track now, uh, overall, uh, it was just a, a very interesting run here. And Randy, uh, here to, to not just celebrate the win, but to talk about everything, uh, the race as a whole, we have our race winner, L. Bryce Whiten, uh, uh, Whitson, excuse me, I've been saying it right all night long, uh, here in the commentary booth with us. Yes, that we do. And Bryce, congratulations on the win. I know you do a lot of work with IROC as the admin. For me as a competitor working with the... Uh, the um working as a competitor for the sports car series i know you're the one sending out emails and stuff and it's definitely good to see you come away with the win uh how was it out there oh i tell you what it was, it was actually a lot of fun tonight um you know this is the first big figure eight race that i've ever actually participated in and uh i spent a lot of time this week with practices i made sure to get on in all the iraq practices that we had to uh, learn a little bit about it and uh you know, it's it's nerve wracking. Uh, sometimes you do not control your own destiny and uh, you just have to hope for the best. And, you know, we got really lucky tonight and we're able to get out front and, you know, kind of set the pace. Yeah, you qualified uh, towards the tail end of that top 10, a very respectable seventh, but obviously worked your way to the front. Um, what do you think was the main thing out there to actually keep yourself uh, moving forward and not get caught up in any of those incidents? You know, the big thing that helped me, one, triple screens for sure is a huge advantage to be able to look left and look right and uh, and see who's coming. The other thing was I, I was taking it overall fairly cautious um, compared to a lot of the other people, uh, you know. And then, as I said, in some ways, it's just luck, uh, you know, having the right the right person behind you that they don't push you through the X at the wrong time or having the right person crossing in front of you that uh, they stop for you. So, you know, like I say, uh, a lot of fun, though. Now, obviously, as I've mentioned several times over the broadcast and just before I interviewed you, you are an admin at the iRacing Online Championship, organizing at least uh, the sports car side of things. I'm not sure about much uh, what all else you do. Do you want to tell us about the uh, organization and what we'll be bringing uh, uh, the viewers here on RaceBot TV? Yeah, so the iRacing Online Championship, we are a uh, we are primarily a fixed oval league and an open setup road league. Uh, what we offer is we, we are partnered with HPP Simulation and Mark Hack mark Hargett there and uh you know we offer prizes from hpp simulation for all of our series and uh you know we we want to put on a good show and want to have a lot of fun um you know as well as you know as as you all know these broadcasts aren't cheap um and so that comes down to the members to pay for some of that and we want to make sure that we can give something back to them and mark Hargett and hpp simulation allows us to do that uh, another couple other sponsors we have are uh, true power motor oil and steve naples and uh, mspec shift lights they also provide prizes for the various series so uh, it's a lot of fun that's for sure uh, i would highly suggest anybody to come and check us out um, here on race spot we're going to be doing our sports car series uh, starting next week uh, following the imsa schedule so uh, you know there's still about 20 spots left in that series so you can go to the race website and come and join us all right, so just one more question, just for just for those that are watching. I know IROC runs a, a lot of various um, uh, series over different parts of the week. Do you want to tell people when your series runs so that they, if they are interested, maybe it uh, coincides with their uh, their day and maybe, you know, you get some people that, uh, you know, that sounds like fun, uh, get out there racing? So right now we run a Tuesday night cup series that follows the cup series schedule. Um, six, uh, 40% length races with 60% uh, fuel. Wednesday night we run trucks and Grand National on uh, on opposite nights. Uh, we follow the entire truck schedule and then we pick up the Grand National schedule whenever the trucks are off. And those are 50% length fuel, uh, races with 60% fuel. And then like I say, we have the Thursday night sports car series that's starting up next week that is primarily following the IMSA schedule with a GT3 class and a prototype class. So uh, yeah, definitely all three of those series are, are going to be a lot of fun for the rest of the season. And uh, we look forward to putting on a lot of good races.
All right, it's definitely good to hear from that, Bryce. Uh, any sponsors you want to thank? I tell you, I, I really want to, this is going to sound funny, I want to thank my dad tonight. Um, as kind of a throwback, I put his colors on the car. I put uh, I put his sponsors on the car. Um, I grew up racing with him, uh, seeing him race, seeing his buddy Mike Cousin race. And, uh, you know, for this, for this throwback type race, I thought it was appropriate to put those colors on there. I feel like he was kind of riding with me all night. And, uh, and that's a big deal to me. So, uh, you know, the only thing that I felt like I was missing was I think I needed a little Mo gear, uh, in the back of that double zero car. So, uh, I'm hoping that Mike cousin can uh, hook me up with that. Yep, definitely. It's definitely hard to say you need a little Mo speed out of that double zero car after lapping the whole field twice, but Bryce, congratulations again. And I know a lot of your uh, championships over at IROC are getting, starting, getting ready to kick off. So good luck to those. Um, and again, congratulations on your win. Now, I believe Mr. Cam Walsh is sitting over with our second place finisher of Austin Missler. Is that right, Cam? Uh, yes, it absolutely is. Uh, well, Austin, uh, it, it's one of those days where you, you start off and you, you started in second, and you finished in second. And for people that run on an oval or on a, on a figure eight track here, running a, a configuration like this, uh, not many people can say that. You know, it's, it's figure eight racing on a, on a Wednesday night, or it's uh, not bad at all. No, not at all. It was a fun night. Never really done figure eights before, so it was nice just giving and taking everyone, being patient, and just walked away without having to pit. I had a bunch of incidents, but nothing too significant. Nothing too significant at all. But, uh, well, uh, approaching that intersection, uh, there's got to be an element of... uh, (laughs) Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the right word, but uh, fear, danger, excitement, I, I don't really know how to call it, but... Uh, Are you trying to figure out how to say balls on the broadcast? Yeah, well, sure. Uh, it, it takes a certain level of cojones to uh, to approach that uh, intersection as many times as you guys managed it. Uh, just going through that intersection, I can't imagine it. Just uh, how, did, how do you feel it went all race long, going through that intersection? It was definitely terrifying knowing that there's people coming from your left or right, especially from the left, because there's a window net and it's hard to see them all the time. From the right, it wasn't as bad because you could see them coming, but left with the window net, you couldn't see them coming at all. And you just had to hope, either hold the gas down, make it through, or break and let them go by. <laughs> Get your hand a little tighter on the, uh, a little white and more knuckle on that uh, steering wheel. But uh, either way, Austin, after 100 laps, you're coming home in second position. Not bad at all. Uh, is there uh, anyone you'd like to, to thank out there? Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Bryce and Gary for making a great league and doing this figure eight on week 13. It's been a different experience and really fun, and it was just a great night overall, I think. Well, and uh, now you will be following the uh, the iRacing Online Championship Series, the iRock Series. Uh, where are you going to be racing? Are you going to be in the sports car series, or are you uh, ra- mainly an uh, oval racer? I'm mainly an oval racer. I'm not too much into road, and I've watched NASCAR my entire life, so I'm, I'll am i stick to that. <laughs> right, I hear you there. But, uh, well, either way, uh, good running from uh, you, Austin. Thank you very much for uh, joining us here in the commentary booth. That's Austin Missler, the number 11 car. He qualified in second and finished just the same. But there's so much more to that story on the uh, way here at this figure eight. Now, Randy, uh, we're going to, of course, uh, bring in our third place finisher. But as an added bonus, it's uh, Daniel Glover, whom we had in the pre-race interview with. And Randy, well, he started in 16th, finished in third. Why don't you... uh, I'll ask questions. Yeah, Daniel, good to talk to you again. We talked to you before the race. Good to talk to you after. Uh, brought it home in P3 from pretty deep in the field, bud. How do you think about it? Uh, it was a fantastic race. A lot of uh, action-packed energy, excitement, that's for sure. And I'm sure everybody out there enjoyed watching it. We had a pretty good car. Didn't really care for where we qualified at, being back about mid-pack and 16th. And, you know, I just figured that that was going to be a bad spot. But, you know, we just whittled our way through the traffic. And then to say, here we are. Yeah, whittling your way through the traffic was definitely a little difficult with those uh, those early incidents. Did you get caught up in any of those, or did you manage to squeak by all that uh, early carnage uh, squeaky clean? I squeaked by a few of them early. I mean, we had a few minor incidents with a couple, but uh, nothing major. The major part happened with about 20 to go. Got involved with a couple lap cars and to a big pileup, and unfortunately had enough damage where we had a pit. So that took our second place run out of it, but it's part of it. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, bring it home in P3. You were running in a 
second place for most of the race, or at least towards the tail end of it, you were. Um, and I believe that's around the time you had that big impact with the, uh, with uh, I believe the lap car going through the intersection, which is uh, definitely hard to see. But um, coming home in P3 for a, a race that was your namesake, I know for me that's it's good to see both the series organizer and Bryce win the race, and you, who essentially was the one putting it on, finishing in third. Um, I know you mentioned before the broadcast there were some real figure eight racers uh, watching. Did, have any of them messaged you and said what they thought about it? No, my dad just messaged me a few minutes ago, and I know he's watching, so I definitely want to get out. Shout out to my dad. You know, like I said, he's he completely helps me with racing. He's the one got me into it. He funds it every week, and I don't know what I'd do without him. So, um, you know, and just all my sponsors, G&G Radiator, uh, RacingGraphics.com, World's Carburation, Roosters. I mean, all these guys come together every week for us, and I couldn't thank everybody enough, especially everybody out there from our hometown cheering us on. Yeah, definitely. And again, congratulations on your P3, Daniel, coming your way through the field. And uh, good luck in all your future IROC endeavors, uh, whatever series you run over there. Um, congratulations. Uh, so, Cam, it was an... Oh, excuse me, go ahead. No, I just want to thank you guys for doing the broadcast tonight and IROC for everything that they do. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Oh, always, bud. It was, fu it was fun. Um, so, Cam, it was an exciting night. What do you think? Well, exciting is one word for it. Uh, I have to say that has got to be one of the most interesting races that we've ever had the opportunity to commentate on. And I have to give a special shout out to those guys for bringing us on board to bring this to you guys, the fans. So hopefully you guys, uh, even though we had a, that slight issue uh, just about in the middle of the race, uh, I have to say we've earmarked it with some pretty good coverage here. I have to say that's some exciting racing, this figure eight stuff. So hopefully maybe we can turn a couple people on to, to racing like this, uh, Randy and well maybe we can do this again sometime yes yeah, certainly maybe this uh maybe we can try to figure something out for a week 13 here at race spot we can do some talking but uh, this is definitely a good uh um good way to uh, kick off the start of the season on this new build with all the new content definitely a fun way rather than doing the hardcore testing with the sports cars which i've been doing all week or with the new miata or the formula or no um and uh, and honestly just to do something different i mean we do the the oval racing stuff and the um well, sports cars and everything else, but to, to do something that's just fun and I don't want to say less serious, but just different is obviously a good uh, a good experience. Yeah, it's just a well, a good experience at all. Just to to well broaden the horizons. So not many people know figure eight racing outside of the Americas. I'm sure it's elsewhere. I'm sure it's got to be in Australia or England or. Uh, someplace in Europe, but for the most part, though, I have to say it's uh, it's an American homestead, and I think we can see why. You know, it's a uh, it's an exciting, uh, high stressful environment, and it's not bad at all. And you can, there's not a bad seat in the house when you're trying to watch it. But uh, well, either way, we'll uh, we'll look forward to the horizons, and we'll see what we can do uh, following along this uh, I Racing Online Championship Series. Yeah, it certainly will. That season's going to kick off next Thursday at I believe 9 p.m. Eastern time. I'm not sure if I'm completely correct on the time there uh that's going to kick off at sebring international raceway we're going to bring you the daytona prototypes in the prototype class as well as a flurry of gt3 cars in gt category we'll be racing for two hours over the course uh at sebring as well as the 12 week uh, championship we're bringing well that's going to do it for us tonight here at race spot tv here at irwindale speedway figure eight in it with irock my name's randy chinnett cam walsh join me in the booth hugo louis working the cameras doing all his magic um, and getting everything righted with that technical difficulty we have. You guys have a good evening, and we will see you next time.